Did you ever wonder what happened to Jojo Dullard, the young woman who vanished into thin air one fateful night in November 1995? This is a tale of an ordinary night turned into a chilling mystery. On the evening of November 9th, Jojo Dullard, a vibrant 21-year-old was out partying in Dublin with friends and an old flame. But when things went awry with the ex-boyfriend, Jojo made the spontaneous decision to return home to Callan. It was a journey she had made countless times before but this time, it was different. Jojo had missed her usual bus home and undeterred decided to hitch a ride from the town of Moon. While this might not have been the safest decision it was the only viable option she had at that late hour. As she waited alone in the cold, she found a phone booth nearby and decided to call her roommate, Mary Cullinan. It was a routine call, just to let Mary know of her whereabouts. As they chatted, a car approached, and Jojo, ever hopeful, asked Mary to stay on the line while she tried to secure a ride. Mary, miles away in their shared apartment, could only wait and listen. Jojo reported back that the driver had agreed to give her a lift. With relief, Mary hung up the phone expecting her friend to walk through their front door in a couple of hours, but that was the last time anyone ever heard from Jojo Dullard. When dawn broke, Jojo was nowhere to be found. Her boss was the first to notice her absence when she didn't show up for her waitressing job. Concerned, he reached out to Kathleen, Jojo's older sister, setting off alarms that something was seriously wrong. And just like that, Jojo Dullard was gone. No trace, no leads, no Jojo. A chilling silence replaced the warmth of her presence leaving behind a haunting question. What happened to Jojo Dullard on that fateful November night? Soon, the search would begin, and a small Irish town would be thrust into the heart of a mystery that continues to baffle investigators to this day. Let us take a moment to remember who Jojo Dullard was, beyond the headlines of her disappearance. Josephine Dullard, affectionately known as Jojo, was a 21-year-old woman whose life was brimming with potential dreams and aspirations. Born and raised in the idyllic town of Callan, located in Kilkenny County, Ireland, Jojo was known for her wonderful, kind and genuine nature. She was a beacon of affection and warmth in a world that often seemed cold and indifferent. Jojo's journey however was not without its hardships. Her mother passed away when she was very young, leaving her older sister Kathleen with the responsibility of raising her. Despite this tragic loss at such a young age, Jojo grew into a resilient and optimistic young woman, embodying the strength and courage of her late mother. In the mid-90s, Jojo moved to Harold's Cross, a town nestled in the south of Dublin. Here, she began to carve out a life for herself, working as a waitress and enrolling in a beauty course. Jojo had a passion for beauty and fashion, and she saw this course as a stepping stone towards her dreams. However, financial constraints soon became a roadblock on her path to success. Despite working tirelessly as a waitress, she found it increasingly difficult to afford her beauty course and pay her rent. It was a tough time but Jojo was not one to give up easily. She was determined to turn her life around, and so, she made the difficult decision to return to Callan, to her family, and to her roots. This decision was not made lightly. Jojo understood the implications it would have on her life and her dreams, However, she also knew that sometimes in order to move forward, one must first take a step back. And so, with a heavy heart, she decided to abandon her beauty course and return home. On the fateful night of November 9th, 95, Jojo was in the midst of this transition. She had decided to go out with friends, unknowing of the tragic turn her life was about to take. It's heartbreaking to think that a night that started with laughter and camaraderie would end in such a chilling mystery. Jojo's life was not without its struggles but it was a life lived with courage and determination. She was a young woman full of dreams and aspirations, trying to navigate through the challenges of life, just like many of us. Jojo was a young woman full of potential, tragically cut short by her mysterious disappearance. When Jojo failed to show up for work the next morning the alarm bells started ringing. Jojo wasn't the type to miss work without notice. Her boss, worried, decided to contact Kathleen, Jojo's older sister. Kathleen too had not heard from Jojo, and a sense of dread began to settle in. The last person to have spoken with Jojo was Mary Cullinan, her roommate. Mary had received a late-night call from Jojo who was stranded in Moon trying to hitch a ride back to Callan. Jojo had told Mary not to hang up, that a car was stopping, and that she was going to ask for a lift. And then, the line went dead. That was the last anyone had heard of Jojo. Armed with this information, Kathleen felt a chill run down her spine. Her younger sister, alone in the night, had vanished without a trace. She knew she had to act quickly. The local police in Callan were alerted, 
but with little to go on, they were as baffled as everyone else. The case was escalated to the Bartinglass police, the only nearby town with a police station. Bartinglass, a name that would become synonymous with Jojo's mysterious disappearance. The Bartinglass police swung into action trying to retrace Jojo's steps that fateful night. They began by questioning locals in Moon, hoping someone had seen something, anything that could provide a lead. They checked the telephone booth where Jojo had made her last known call. They sought out drivers who may have been on the road that night but it was like searching for a needle in a haystack. Jojo had vanished into thin air. As the days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the investigation grew cold. The police were stumped, the local community was in shock, and a family was left in tatters. Their beloved Jojo, lost without a trace. With no leads to follow, the search for Jojo was about to become a long and frustrating journey. As days turned into weeks and then months, theories about what happened to Jojo started to surface. In the grim and unsettling arena of missing persons, theories can often be the only lifelines we have to cling on to. Theories, hypotheses, conjectures, they all begin to emerge, each one as haunting as the last. The case of Jojo Dullard was no different. The first theory that emerged was the one most hoped for. Some believed that Jojo might have run away seeking a fresh start, away from the struggles of her life. But those who knew Jojo personally dismissed this theory, stating that she was not one to abandon her family, who she loved dearly. Another theory suggested that Jojo might have been the victim of a random act of violence, an unfortunate casualty of a late-night journey. This was a chilling prospect, considering the fact that she was last seen getting into an unknown car, late at night, in a relatively secluded area. The third, and perhaps the most disturbing theory, proposed that Jojo's disappearance was not random at all. Some speculated that she might have been targeted by a serial offender, given that she was the fourth woman to go missing in the so-called Triangle of Ireland within a relatively short span of time. However, the lack of physical evidence made it difficult to substantiate any of these theories. The phone booth from which Jojo made her last known call was examined, but no useful evidence was found. The car that Jojo got into was never identified, and the driver remained a mystery. The lack of CCTV and other surveillance systems common in today's world, further hampered the investigation. Despite the exhaustive efforts of the investigators, the case seemed to be drowning in a sea of dead ends. There were no leads, no witnesses, and most crucially, no Jojo. The only tangible piece of evidence was the memory of her last phone call. But memories as we know are not always the most reliable form of evidence. It was as if Jojo had vanished into thin air, leaving behind nothing but a trail of questions. And as the months turned into years, the hope of finding her began to fade. Each theory, each dead end, only seemed to deepen the mystery surrounding Jojo's disappearance. And with every passing day, the question became not just about what had happened to her, but also about how a young woman could simply disappear in the middle of the night, without a trace, in a country as small and close-knit as Ireland. Despite the many theories, the question remains, what happened to Jojo Dullard? As we approach the end of our journey into Jojo's story, it's important to remember Jojo as more than just a missing person. Behind the headlines and the decades-long mystery, there was a vibrant, compassionate and spirited woman named Jojo Dullard. This was a young woman who faced adversity with resilience and grace. When life delivered a blow as cruel as the loss of her mother at an early age, Jojo held her head high. Raised by her elder sister Kathleen, her strength of character shone through, a testament to her resilience. Jojo was described as wonderful, kind, genuine, and affectionate. Those who knew her best remember her warm smile, her infectious laughter, and her unwavering kindness. She was the kind of person who would light up a room the moment she walked in, her energy and spirit impossible to ignore. Despite the hardships Jojo faced, she was ambitious and determined. She moved to Harold's Cross in Dublin, where she juggled a job as a waitress while attending beauty school, hoping to create a better life for herself. But when the costs became too much, she made the tough decision to return home to Callan in Kilkenny County. Jojo was not just a waitress or a beauty school student or a missing woman, she was a cherished daughter, a loving sister, and a dear friend. She was a source of joy to those who knew her, a beacon of strength and positivity. Her sudden and unexplained disappearance left a void in the lives of her loved ones, a void that remains unfilled to this day. She was, and still is, deeply missed. Every person who knew Jojo has their own unique memories of her, memories that they hold on to, memories that keep Jojo's spirit alive, 
Jojo Dullard, a young woman full of life and potential is missed by many. Almost three decades have passed since Jojo Dullard disappeared, yet her case remains unsolved. This case isn't merely a cold one gathering dust in some forgotten file cabinet, it is an open wound, a living, breathing testament to the ongoing search for truth, justice and closure. Jojo's story didn't end on that fateful November night in 95, it continues today, in the tireless efforts of those who refuse to let her memory fade into obscurity. Jojo's sister Kathleen has been a beacon of hope and resilience. She's been championing the cause, relentlessly pushing for the case to be re-examined and pursued. Even after all these years, she hasn't given up on the quest for answers. She's a testament to the power of unyielding love and determination. In the world of true crime, public involvement is often a game-changer. The collective effort of a community can turn the tide in an investigation. It's not just about the detectives and the forensics. It's about the folks who might have seen something, heard something or know something. It's about the people who keep the conversation alive, who share the story, who refuse to let the victims be forgotten. In Jojo's case, public involvement could be the missing piece of the puzzle. It could be the key to unlocking the truth about her disappearance. What if someone out there holds a crucial piece of information, a memory, a sighting, a conversation overheard, Seemingly insignificant details that could mean everything in the grand scheme of things. This isn't just about solving a mystery, it's about giving Jojo Dullard the justice she deserves. It's about providing closure to a family that's been in limbo for almost 30 years. It's about sending a message that no case is ever truly forgotten, that every victim matters. The power of a story lies not just in its telling, but in its reception. Jojo's story has been told and retold over the years, but it's the way we receive it the way we respond to it, that can make all the difference. We can choose to be passive listeners, or we can choose to be active participants in the quest for justice. Remember, every bit of information counts. Every lead could be the one that brings us closer to the truth. Every voice has the potential to tip the scales, to bring light to the dark corners of this unsolved mystery. So here's the call to action. Don't let Jojo Dullard's story fade into the background. Keep it alive. Share it talk about it. And most importantly, if you have any information about her disappearance no matter how insignificant it may seem, come forward. If you have any information about Jojo Dullard's disappearance no matter how insignificant it may seem, please come forward. You could hold the key to solving this heartbreaking mystery.